Hi, I'm Dr. Kyle Hancock, and today we're here with Yada Yada. Today I would like to talk a little bit about how we can respond to discomfort and distress. Broadly speaking, in an overly simplified way, my reaction to a problem can either make the problem bigger or make the problem better. Usually, the guiding factor is the feeling I am having most at the time. I've noticed in my own life when I'm tired, or hungry, or frustrated, or on edge, I have more difficulty responding to a problem in my life in a way that makes it better. And quite honestly, I often respond in a way that makes that problem bigger. A simple approach that can be very useful in the circumstance when I want to reduce the intensity or the length of a problem is to start with a simple pause. Usually when my emotions run high, I am more likely to act first and think later. And more often than not, this approach of acting before thinking makes the problem bigger and rarely better. So a simple tool I often use in an effort to reduce the size or intensity of a problem is to slow down, take a breath, be still, pause in my movement, and most of all, to pause in my speech. Quite often my experience is we create problems for ourselves by speaking before thinking in addition to acting before thinking. So a simple tool I like to use is to bow my head gently, to close my eyes, and purposefully pause all of my behavior, to be still as a statue, and wait just for a moment. Sometimes I count backward from three, sometimes I count backward from five, and when I get to one, I ask myself the simple question, is what I am doing right now helping make this problem better, or is it making this problem bigger? And if my impulse or first reaction would likely make the problem bigger, I start with my pause again. I give myself a chance to breathe in deeply, to slow down my heart rate, to increase my thoughts, to be more considerate, a little more patient, and a little more calm. When I come up with a solution that I think would likely make the problem better, I give it my best effort, and then I evaluate. If it worked, I'll use it again, and if it didn't work, then I start again. The benefit with this simple technique is it can be used almost anywhere with almost anyone. In public settings, I've often been known to say something like, let me think about that for a moment. Or, hmm, I really want to make sure I understand where you're coming from. It makes it a little bit less awkward and still gives me a chance to think more effectively or to think more thoroughly about my response. Far too often, I think we see each other acting in a moment of discomfort or pain or hurt that unfortunately results in a bigger problem or contributes to the hurt or loss of someone else. This simple tool can reduce that discomfort. Another part of that problem is that quite often, after I make that mistake, I feel more disappointment more frustration, more embarrassment, or more guilt. So again, not only have I contributed to a bigger problem for you, I've also contributed to a bigger problem for me. So the next time you find yourself in a moment where you feel an impulse to do something rash, pause, be still, quiet your voice, slow down, wait just a moment. Ask yourself that simple question. Will my response make this problem bigger or will it make it better? And allow that to guide your behavior.